before AI, we were getting about 60% open rates on our cold emails, but now after AI, we've gotten those up to 90% plus consistently using an AI tool that I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to use and set up in this video. I'm Lee Gen J. we do about 500K per month in revenue. If you want my 11,000 leads and my free course and community, link in the description. Now let's get right into the video. All right, now the old best practice for doing subject lines and first lines in your cold emails, and this got us to about 60, 70% open rates, was a generic subject line like question J. This sparked some curiosity, got you to open the email, and then a first line that was written with AI with very basic information. I saw you went to UF, go Gators. All of this is dead. These old strategies do not work anymore. If you are a cold email marketer, you know this. You've probably seen your open rates go down. You've probably seen your reply rates go down. Now, the new way, using ChatGPT, using AI, the subject line that it spits out, your next Alibaba-sized client. Of course I want to open that email. Of course I'm curious who my next Alibaba-sized client is going to be. And then the first line. I saw that AutoPR works with Alibaba. How did you close a deal with a multi-billion dollar company? This actually sounds like a human that read about the company, that read about our workings with Alibaba, and wants to know more about how we close them, and maybe even has an opportunity for how we close them. And this is the strategy that gets us 90% reply rates. So how do we get here? Now, before we go through the steps on how to actually create those first lines and subject lines, it's important to know that you're going to need a data source. You're going to need data that has the person's name, the company, and the company's LinkedIn profile URL. Now, if you're using a good data source like Apollo.io, which is my recommended one, then you're going to have all that data that you need. Then you just need to enrich it, and then you need to link it using the software tools that I'm about to show you to make it very simple to scale the amount of first lines and subject lines that you can write all at once. Because sure, anybody can feed a LinkedIn description into into ChatGPT and write a first line. That's not what we're doing here. We're doing this at scale. I'm gonna show you how to do this thousands at a time so that you can upload your data source into a spreadsheet, drag that thing down and create thousands of subject lines and first lines at scale. Nobody else is teaching this stuff. Now let's go in and show you exactly how to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a very simple data set here. I eliminated all the things that I'm not gonna be using. I left the company LinkedIn profile. Now there's a couple tools that we're going to need to use. Right now I'm in Google Sheets. You're gonna to need to use Google Sheets to do this the way that I'm teaching it. Now, there's other people, and I've taught this before as well, that taught GPT for Sheets, just you know, read their company SEO data points and write a first line for it. That's not good enough. In order to get a quality first line, we need more data. So we're going to need to enrich this spreadsheet with more information from their LinkedIn account. So in order to enrich this data, we're going to need to use a tool. We're gonna to need to use Derek App. Now Derek App links with your Google Sheets and enriches data from LinkedIn. It has a couple different features as well, uh, but for the purpose of this video, it enriches LinkedIn data. So let's head to our sheet. Let's go to where I can add Derek. So that's going to be in extensions. Uh, I'm gonna to go to add-ons and then go to manage add-ons since you probably don't have this yet. You can then search up here, Derek. There it is right there. All you have to do is install Derek app. It does come with free credits to start with and then it's very affordable to enrich after that. The most affordable that I've seen actually. I don't make any money, they're not a, they're not a partner in any way. So you're gonna add Derek app. Uh, obviously mine is already installed. So once it's added, I'm gonna go ahead and come down here to my extensions and then I can open sidebar so I can see what Derek actually does. Okay, here we are in Derek. Now the function I'm gonna be using today, obviously there's a lot of different options here that you can play with, but I'm gonna come into companies, enrich LinkedIn companies. I'm gonna designate the column with the company URL and then I'm gonna go ahead and click enrich. Now I've tried this with personal URLs and it does not get good enough data to write first lines off of. You might be thinking that might be a better idea. It's not, company URLs actually works better. So here it is, it's creating all these different columns where with data that it is now enriching. Another benefit of using company URLs instead of personal URLs is it keeps it business related. Not everybody's personal LinkedIn is related to the company at which you're emailing them about. And also some personal LinkedIn's are private. Now, one thing you'll have to do once you sign up for Derek is log in to your LinkedIn using Derek. I apologize for not mentioning this before, but there is a app that you'll need to install with Derek. It's an extension here. It's Cookie Importer for Derek. And the app will guide you through this once you download it. But if not, you can come into your extension store and download Cookie Importer for Derek. From there, you'll sign into your LinkedIn account. It will give you a cookie to copy and paste into the Google Sheets extension here. And then you're good to go. And it does use your LinkedIn to scrape all of this data. So it is a, a step that you'll have to do. This is free. It's very easy. I didn't run into any problems. And the app does a very good job guiding you through it. All right, so now that I'm here, I've got all of my enriched data. What do I actually need? I'm gonna get rid of the columns that aren't important to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this side tab and see what's important. 
We've got company name, which I already kind of have. Company uh, universal name, I don't need. What here do I need? What I'm gonna be using is this company description. Everything else I'm gonna delete. All right, so now I've got this enriched list. I've got company descriptions for every single data point that I had on here. So it's at 100% success rate. That is a great sign when we're trying to create cold emails at scale. So now that I've got this company description, I can go ahead and use ChatGPT. I can use AI to write first lines and subject lines based on this description. So let's go ahead and figure out how to do that. The next tool that we're gonna have to use to use ChatGPT is GPT for Sheets. It looks like this. I'm gonna come into my Manage add-on so that you can see what that looks like. Now there's a couple extensions out here that do similar things, but you're gonna wanna use GPT for Sheets. This one works the best, and you're gonna be able to customize it the way that I'm gonna need you to to make it work. And I just wanna add a note here. I spent probably 30 hours experimenting with all the different tools and strategies in order to get first lines and subject lines that actually worked. So many of them were corny, so many of them were crap. So I strongly recommend using the tools, using the scripts, using the strategies that I'm teaching here. If you try to differ from the path, there's a good chance you're gonna end up in one of my other 100 scenarios where this didn't work. So please use my tools and I promise this is gonna work for you. Let's go back to the sheets. So now that you've got GPT for Sheets installed, we're gonna come into extensions and see what that actually does. So GPT for Sheets in the add-ons and let's go ahead and open. And that's gonna open up that sidebar again to see what this thing actually does. Let's move myself out of the way. Now you're going to need an OpenAI account in order to make this work. So before you get started, make sure that you sign up for an OpenAI API key, and then you're gonna come into API keys and set that here. Now, if you don't already have one, it's fairly simple. You're gonna come into OpenAI. Now, if you don't already have an, a ChatGPT API key, you're gonna want one. If not for this, then for something in the future. So come to OpenAI.com, go ahead and click sign up in the top right-hand corner. You'll be taken to a thing like this where you can enter your email address or sign up with Google, put in some payment information, and then you're gonna come into platform.openai.com. Once you have an account, come into API, not ChatGPT, API. And this is where you'll get your API keys. So you can come up here to the top right, view API keys is right here. And this is where you can create a new API key and play with it. Another really fun feature within the platform.openai.com is this playground. So this is where you can actually uh, play with the models that you're gonna be using with the API. So if you ever wanna test something, you can do it here. So you don't actually have to run a test in the platform that you're using. And as you can see, we've got ChatGPT4 enabled, so I can use that in all of my APIs. All right, back to it. So you're gonna put your API key in here under API keys. I'm gonna set the default settings as well within the settings function. So here you can see all the different GPT functions that you can use. I really only use the top one and this will kind of help you along the road. All right, but let's go back and set some default settings. This way you don't have to pick things every single time. You're gonna use GPT-4, uh, it's the best by far. Uh, I like to keep my creative up, but you can experiment with some different ones. Uh, I'll put it on neutral for now, just for the sake of experimentation. Max response size, I like to tell it the response size in my prompts, but you can go ahead and, and set this lower if you'd like. Like I don't like my responses very long, so this is about 23 words. All right, now one thing that I definitely feel like I should mention is in GPT formula controls, there are a couple options down here. Enable cache, I leave. So for about six hours, that means every six hours, GPT for Sheets will not replenish data. If this is not cached, every time this sheet is opened, it will redo every single line, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it will cost you money. Granted, ChatGPT OpenAI is very cheap, so if you're using this correctly, this shouldn't cost you pennies, but if you're refreshing every time that you're doing this and you've got thousands of data points, this can cost you quite a bit of money. Now, if you have a sheet and you've got first lines and subject lines that you want to keep, you can pause GPT formulas by selecting this button. And if you wanna play with the formulas a little bit, you can use AI uh, by telling it what kind of formula you want and it will actually generate it for you using AI. And this is really cool. No other extension has been able to do this. So this is a little gold, golden nugget of the video. If you feel like using my strategies to do anything else, which there's probably a lot that you can think of, uh, you can use this this AI function to create formulas for you. All right, now let's get into actually using this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and close out this sidebar and I'm going to create another column to the right. Uh, I like to clear formatting just in case something's messed up. And let's start with subject line. So GPT subject line. Now I wanna create a subject line based on this company description. And I've got a prompt that works very well for me and I'll be sharing these in my community. If you do want to access these prompts, just join my community, it's free and you can get all of these no problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the subject line. I'll read it to you in just a second in case you don't feel like joining the community. So we're gonna go ahead and come in here and we're gonna type in equals 
under the subject line, GPT, and all of these prompts are gonna come up. We're just gonna do this first one. Now you might notice you've got GPT and it's showing prompt, value, temperature, model. Now we set the temperature and the model in the defaults. The temperature was the creativity level zero through one and the model we selected GPT-4. So now we don't have to set these. So let's go ahead and insert this prompt that I just copied and pasted. The prompt is as follows, act as a cold email marketing expert. You are to read the company's LinkedIn description first, then write a subject line for a cold email to a decision maker. The subject line should follow these rules. Rule number one, it should not exceed five words. Rule number two, it should spark curiosity in the prospect. And rule number three, it should be personal and related to their company description. Rule four, do not be cringe, do not sound robotic. So now that I've got that, I wanna put it in parentheses in order to make it work. As you can see, it just turned green. That's a good sign, it means it's working. I'm gonna go ahead and put a comma, and then it's gonna move me over to value. That means it's working. That's a good sign. If it's still black, it means the parentheses are messed up. So the value is the data in the sheet that it's working off of. So if in this case, I'm going to select column J, that first one. That is going to be the company description that it's going to work off of. And then I'm going to go ahead and close that off. See, if I put another comma, it'll take me to temperature, but I already set the temperature in the default. So I'm just going to close that off and hit enter. Now, as you can see, it's loading. It is creating a subject line based on my instructions. So let's see what it came up with. Enhancing Florida's judicial efficiency. It read their description, which is very short compared to most. Most are very very long, so it did its best here. They're a judicial circuit court in Florida, and it enhancing Florida's judicial efficiency. It's related to them. Awesome. So if the set, if the first line is also related to them, there's a really good chance that this thing gets opened. And it's doing that this off of very little information. So I'm going to do uh, a couple more. I'm just going to click and drag this all the way down. And now, as you can see, more of them are loading, and you can do this for thousands and thousands of data points. Maximize your injury compensation. That sounds interesting. Enhancing Shutz and Brown's innovation. Maximize your legal recovery. Enhancing Shook and Hardy's, I gotta make this bigger, mission. Cool, so it's very relevant to them. All right, now that's subject lines. Let's go ahead and create first lines. Insert one column to the right, GPT first line, and same thing here, equals GPT. We're going to use my first line prompt. Obviously, I gotta put it in parentheses like we just learned. Now this prompt, act as a cold email marketing expert. You are to read the company's LinkedIn description first, then write a first line for a cold email to a decision maker at the company. The sentence tone should be professional and serious. Do not be cringe. Please follow these rules. Rule one, use your knowledge of the industry and of the company to write the first line. Rule two, the sentence should ask if the company helps a specific type of person in a specific situation that is adjacent to the service that the company provides. Rule three, keep it short. The sentence should be no longer than 15 words. Here is the LinkedIn company description. Let's move on to the value and let's shut that off and see what it comes up with again it's working off very little data here in the company description most are much longer and i'm going to click and drag so we can see a couple of examples here all right let's read all of these at once so i'm going to clear formatting there we go now i can read all of them okay does your firm assist victims struggling with insurance claims post-accident a very specific question for a, a law firm that's something that's definitely going to garner an open and a response does shuts and brown assist international businesses navigating U.S. legal complexities? Another very specific question. Does Roman and Roman assist individuals facing complex non-personal injury legal situations? This is an expert-like first line. This is definitely going to get open because it sounds like they know what the company does and they're asking a provocative question. Now you can go in and close that deal, show them how you can help them. The goal with the first line and the subject line is to get opened. After that, it's up to you to close that deal, offer a call to action that they want, and get a response. Now, I encourage you to play with these tools. Play with your prompts, play with your subject lines, play with your first lines, and test them against other things. This works specifically for us because we're helping this specific niche do a specific thing. Now, if your subject line and your first line aren't relevant to your offer, change them experiment, but you need data to work off of, and you need the LinkedIn company description, and you need ChatGPT combined with these prompts in order to make it work. Now, if you want the prompts, hit my community. They're going to be pinned in a comment. You can join via the link below, and if you like this video, please watch more on AI, and I'll see you in the next one.